Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gotland Game Talk uh, and Uppsala University. My name is Pelle Forsmark, and I will be your host today during this seminar, which is organized by the Department of Game Design at Campus Gotland. Gotland Game Talk is created to give students, staff, uh, alumni, and anyone interested, really, the opportunity to meet and learn from professionals in the field of game design, game development, and game production. And the subject for this season's uh, this season of the series is Sweden's game development clusters, hubs, and communities. Today, we are joined by Thomas Alström, general manager at East Sweden Game, a community based in the cities of Linköping and Norrköping in, you guessed it, the eastern part of Sweden. Well, the eastern part of mainland Sweden, anyway. East Sweden Game is a community, office space, and business incubator that offers an area for meetings, exchange of knowledge, and development. And today we will learn more about Thomas himself and about the state of the Swedish game industry in the east of Sweden. At the end of our conversation, we will end this recording and we will open up for questions so you in the audience uh, will be allowed and able to ask your questions directly to Thomas. But for now, let's dive straight into it and say hello and welcome to Thomas Alström. Welcome to Gotland Game Talk. Great to have you here. Thank you very much and hello, everyone. It's super great to be here and uh, what a wonderful introduction. I was I was actually impressed. <laughs> Sounded very good. <laughs> Thank you. I made it. Uh, so yes. uh, uh, <laughs> you it was a brief it. introduction, but uh, please, Thomas, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? What is your what is your background and how did you end up in the position that you are now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's go way back. Let's start from the beginning. Uh, I got my first uh, computer in 1984. That's ages ago. It was around that time where the home computer actually was introduced and I directly dived into the world of, of programming and then art design and Games was, of course, uh, very interesting already back then. So I started to make my own games and made a lot of crazy and, and creative stuff. Uh, I later joined the demo scene. I'm not sure if you know about the demo scene. The demo scene is essentially like a, a cultural phenomena where you uh, push the hardware on like limited computers to see how far you can take the art and, and the cool algorithms. I'm not sure if that's the official description, but uh, that's what it was for me. Uh, so that's where I like learned to collaborate and to make cool um, experiences on 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 computers. Um, after some studies, I was uh, employed by UDS in Norrköping. Uh, UDS was um, one of the first uh, fast-growing game companies in Sweden. Actually, it was UDS and Dice back then. They kind of competed against each other, uh, which, which of the companies that would grow and become the, the number one in Sweden. Unfortunately, UGS lost. <laughs> so I put my bets on the wrong company, but it was cool because it was close to my home. Uh, so UGS, um, I think it peaked with around maybe 130 employees, which was very large back then. Uh, DICE uh, prolonged and exists still today, as you know. Uh, I think UDS went down somewhere around maybe 2002 or something like that. Um, and after UDS, I decided to start my own studio. So I started a company and we focused on um, advertising games, which means like games for, for selling brands. And, and I wanted to take the knowledge from, from making games and, and um, put that uh, on a, a new um, a business area, so to speak. Um, so that was really cool. And since then, I have been going back and forth into uh, different game studios. Uh, I have founded a lot of them myself and with my friends. And I've also been employed in other startups. But I have a, a strong passion for early stage entrepreneurship. And I like to start things, uh, to run things, and just take care of things that's ongoing. is not for me. Uh, so I like to start things. And I've also been... Um, working for uh, un um, the University of Linköping, um, also going like a bit of back and forth with the university, but I've been there for maybe 10 years or something like that. So in that position, my job was to help scientists and uh, students to commercialize knowledge from the university, which meant uh, 
scientific results or just ideas from thesis works and, and so forth from students. So in that role, I really went deep on the startup culture and uh, how you uh, can start a company successfully. Uh, at, at university, it was not only about games, but of course I ran into a lot of students and also scientists and employees that were into the gaming uh, industry. So I could con continue to work with that with that passion there as well. So I think that that frames me quite well. I, I really like the games industry. I also like the startup culture and, and art entrepreneurship. I'm not a super gamer myself. I don't think you have to be a super gamer to work in the games industry. I love playing games, but time uh, is not always there <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> playing games. So it, it's really hard. So there, I'm struggling to keep up with the, with the trends and all kind of stuff. Uh, and I think, the, and, and yeah, that that concludes uh, my my history pretty well. I think. <laughs> yeah, but so you started very much in in game development and then transitioned more into management and business development. Yeah, that's true. Um, when I was a kid, when I was like a teenager on the first home computers, programming was number one. Back then it was like basic and Fortran and those kind of languages. Uh, in the demo scene, if you wanted to be cool and do amazing things, you had to program in assembler. Uh, so I tried that, uh, but I was too eager to get result. I didn't have the, uh, what do you say, the, the like... Um, energy to put all those hours into uh, learning uh, machine code and assemblers and, and moving bits and bytes out of re registers. So then I moved over more to the artistic side. So music and art was all, was that. Uh, uh, those areas were, were the, the areas where I uh, tried to excel. And when I was, started to work uh, with UDS, I was a level designer, 3D modeler mainly. But I quickly learned that there were other people that were better than me. <laughs> they were more talented than me. Uh, but I was better than them talking and, and starting up projects. So for me, it was natural to to let the hardcore talent do their thing and I could move on to more managed thing and, and start up things. Um, yeah, yeah I, you know, <laughs> I know the feeling. Uh, but yeah. uh, what, what, what kind of games were you making at uh, UDS before it went bust? I was hired to do a game called Salvation, which was really, really ambitious. Uh, it was... Uh, Salvation was a game where you played, you were like a white angel uh, flying around in a dark city where there were dark angels and there was a constant fight between light and dark. It was really ambitious. And we had a an, an, uh, game engine. And back then, Unity or Unreal didn't exist. You had to make your own game engine. There, I, don't, I don't think we had like graphics card. Everything was like software. So we had our own software renderer and it was really cool because it could handle dynamic light. So the lights in the city uh, could change over the day, which was really, really unique back then. So that project was really ambitious and really cool. And I really liked that dark atmosphere. Uh, but for some reason, we never nailed the technology. So every day we went to the lead program and said, do you have the lighting engine ready? Uh, yeah, well, almost tomorrow. Yeah, come back tomorrow. And he said that every day for quite a while. <laughs> but you never nailed that uh, lightning system. So and we didn't get any funding. So I had to move on to other projects. Um, then I worked with Ignition, a cult game where you drive with a small cartoonish cars. Not sure if you've heard about Ignition, but check it out. It's really, really cool. Uh, and after that, I went uh, on to be a lead designer for a PlayStation 1 game called No Fear Downhill Mountain Biking, which was a racing game where you raced downhill uh, which was really cool. And that was like the first really like super large uh, console project that I worked on, which was really, really fun. And I, I learned I learned a lot from that. And how later did you get involved with the uh, university? Because Linköping University, uh, unlike, for example, here at Gotland or <clears throat> in Skövde, where Sweden Game Arena operates, <clears throat> doesn't have a pure game development education. There is some game development in certain that's courses. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what true. Was, what was your journey with the university? Yeah, i had been working with a startup called Power Challenge. They exist still today, but we, we did a, a classic venture capital round. This was around maybe 2005, 2008. Uh, we started a company and we aimed our focus on becoming number one in um, sport games on the web. 
<laughs> this was before the mobile sector exploded. And our prediction was that in the future, we will, you will play all games in your web browser with console quality, basically. So we, we uh, uh, aim for that market. We uh, uh, attracted uh, 60 million Swedish crowns in venture capital to achieve this goal. Uh, and it was also an amazing journey, but uh, things didn't really uh, play out as we had hoped. So uh, the money, we, the money uh, um, didn't last that long. And the uh, financial crisis came in in 2008. So we had to minimize the company just to survive and I left. And, and then I was really like, so what am I going to do now? I was really tired. I didn't have the energy to start something new. I didn't have the energy to apply for jobs. I was just like, well, what am I going to do now? Um, and then um, Per Arn from uh, Kövde, from the gaming incubator, contacted me and basically headhunted me to work as a business coach uh, for the incubator in Kövde. So I, I actually spent a year in Kövde, which was great. But it wasn't really sustainable because I traveled back and forth from Lean Shopping to Kövde, and it takes a couple of hours. So it's, it wasn't really <laughs> set up uh, to last long. <laughs> but I really liked working in that incubator and work close with the education there in Kövde. So I learned that um, like this is something I wanted to do instead of running my own uh, company uh, or instead of starting up something new just for myself and my, my friends. I, I found it very pleasing to work with uh, several teams and, and try to coach them and lead them into uh, to the future. So um, so I had some some contact at the university in Lean Shopping. They asked me because they had one scientist that was about to start a company within AI in games and they needed someone to coach uh, him. His name is Martin. So they asked me if I wanted to work part time on the university and helping Martin uh, specifically with his startup. So I, I said yes. Um, but when I started to work with Martin and his team inside the university, I found out that there are so many interesting uh, projects and, and, and persons within the University of Lean Shopping. So I asked the, the innovation center if I could work there basically full time uh, with, with innovation support. So and and, and that I did. <laughs> so yeah, it that was, was, that a, was a not long... that was not only within game development and startups. It was in innovation in general. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I you know. Games are made by so many cool technologies. I mean, if you work with games, you know about visualization, you know about simulation, you know about AI, you know about storytelling, you know about running a team, you know how to create a compelling story and all the kind of things. So I was almost surprised to, to find that I could go to scientists within those areas that I mentioned, visualization or AI, and I, and, and I know uh, intuitively what they were talking about even though i didn't <laughs> had been studying or researching that because i had been in the games industry and you, ha you have to know that those kind of things so i had a uh, um, good use of of my games industry background uh, even outside the games industry um yeah so so how does all of this lead to the formation of sweden <laughs> game marine oh, sorry sorry east sweden game yeah yeah that's a good question yeah because up, up till now I had been in Skövde, I had been traveling all around the world, I had been at conferences, GDC and E3, and I saw how the games industry were booming everywhere. And like, uh, yeah, but, but for some reason in Östergötland, uh, Lean Shopping and Norrköping, it didn't really boom. And even though we have this strong university with a lot of, of relevant educations for the games industry, for some reason there were no uh, fast growing games companies in our region. So I, I had been thinking thinking about that for a long time, uh, but for me as a private person, I, I couldn't do anything about it. Uh, but then uh, um, a city owned a real estate company called St. Kosh. Uh, they had similar ideas. They were investing um, a lot of money into a new um, kind of um, uh, science park in Linköping called Ebbe Park. And, they started to think like when we build those new houses and create this new um, center for like innovation and startups, are there industries that we should plant in this environment? Industry that are strong or, or not strong in our region that we actually can just plant into this uh, amazing new uh, part of the city. So they started to think about the games industry. Shouldn't that be amazing to have the games industry present in the science park from day one? So they start calling me and asking questions like how can we make make more game companies grow in, in Lean Shopping? How can we make the students work with games and 
isn't that perfect. And if we succeed, we can get uh, more taxes into the to the city, and we can get uh, uh, new jobs and, and that kind of stuff. So I made a what do you say, first studio, yeah? like a, a small study uh, where I uh, looked at the industry. I gave them some numbers, uh, and I also suggested how we could do this. Uh, and since I like the le like the, the lean startup concept, I suggested the vision. Let's let's have this amazing vision, but let's start small. So to get started, um, instead of applying for millions and millions of, of crew in order to start up everything, I just wanted a budget for fika, coffee, and a small like a room that we could meet up. <laughs> so that's how we started, basically, uh, very very small, um, and we decided that let's um, not write a long document on how to succeed instead let's gather the, the local game developers and ask them what do you need what's in in your way of becoming successful and, and reaching your dreams and the answers that they gave became our uh, plan uh, basically so that's how east building game started uh, essentially and what, what <laughs> was the answer? That makes sense. <laughs> no. Uh, what was the answers they they gave? What was it they needed? Um, we found out that even though there were no fast-growing game companies, there were a lot of individuals and a lot of projects that that went on uh, in the in the trenches. Um, but most of the developers were quite alone. They had the perception that they were the only team or the only person in the region working with games. So when people got together, they found out that whoa, we are we are we are several people doing this, and we have talented people, and we had some scientists showing up, and we had some entrepreneurs, and we had so <clears throat> number one was <clears throat> to create a community where people can meet and discuss and and influence and inspire each other, um, and also some developers needed a place to be, um, so we started a, a co-working space pretty pretty fast. Um, where you can meet and, and the reason for starting a, a co-working space was that a lot of the developers they work from home or maybe from school so they didn't need like solid offices it was more like they needed a, a safe area where they can go and, and work uh, and share share experiences and share knowledge um, but of course um, most of the developers that showed up early also had a lot of questions they had loads of questions around how do I approach a publisher? How do I start a company? How, how can I find, like, I'm a programmer. How can I find an artist? And, and if I find an artist, how, how should I pay that person with percentage or money? Or what, how do I write an agreement? How do I take care of taxes? How, well, are so many questions <laughs> uh, besides just making that game. So advisory and networking was also very important for us in the early stage. Um, something that was different from the university was that Everyone showing up at this winning game were super motivated. Everyone was driven by passion. I was used to in the university that, like, I had also I always had to use the what do you say, like the whip. Like, mm. <laughs> if if the um, projects, if the innovation or startup projects within the university, uh, they had so much other things to do, and the startup was all of, often just a hobby. So we had to like like always add goals and push push people to to pursue their dreams <laughs> for some reason but but the East winning game we didn't have to push people we didn't have we didn't have to have a program we didn't have to have exams or 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 um, goals or people worked on their own passion um so the number one tool for us to to get going was to inspire and to give people the uh, the, the the things they needed uh, and the the, the advices that they needed. Um, yeah. So so in the <laughs> beginning, you it wasn't that much more than a, a a meeting spot and a work a bit of a workspace and a fika budget and getting people together. Yeah. Uh, coming in with their own passion and motivation, but yeah. then it grew from there, right? Yeah, it did. Uh, and the place uh, I remember when we started the the meeting space that I was looking for was really like a small, like a, a club room or something like that. But since the project was financed by St. Kosh, the real estate company, they had an empty office space that was 200 square meters, which was like, I was like, wow, this is super huge. How can we 
like you utilize this area so we created the social area where we can have meetups and fika sessions we had the co-working space where people could, could work flexible and we also had some like um uh, what do you say uh, more um like we had a, a, a vr space and uh, we had a like a, a small we, it wasn't a laboratory but we had like a computer set up so if you didn't have a computer you could borrow one and so forth and the, and the super small kitchen um yeah that's that's how we started but but once we we started with this um more and more people came to us and um every week when we have a uh, fika tushas fika <laughs> we started with the tushas fika very early and we still do the tushas fikas uh thursday fika um every, every week one or two new members showed up and, and showing some cool uh, things and uh yeah essentially we've been doing this on repeat for five six years and uh, uh, thanks to the passion and, and the drive that the members have uh, some of the the teams that showed up the first week are now very successful uh, which is super great mm. yeah and five six years that isn't it isn't that long ago so a lot has happened in a relatively short period of time right yeah yeah that's true that's true mm. Um, and, and where are it, you? It can well, sound... Yes, sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. So, so where where are you now? If you come, how does it work today? If you come as a as an aspiring single game developer, or you have a little team that you've been working on a game back home, and you want to come to Sweden Game Arena, what what can you expect to find? Yeah, them? we still have our core offer is is kind of intact, and we are we still call ourselves. A, community essentially we are a community uh, we are not uh, you can call us an incubator if you want you can call us the cluster you can call us like anything but essentially we want to be a community we're not uh, a service where you come and, and ask for services we don't have a package we don't have certain steps that, that you have to move through we still work very much based on the needs from the developers so if you come to this winning game and say hey we will talk to you we will ask who are you and uh, can, do you have a game prototype and we take a look at that and, and then we ask you what so what do you need to to fulfill your dreams no matter if it's starting a game studio if, or if you're looking for an employment or if you're a freelancer like what is your goal and what do you need to to uh, succeed with your goals and dreams and then we try to work with that um, and sometimes we have structured meetings uh, uh, sometimes we will say like, I just, I just need to be left alone. I just need a place where I can sit and work and I don't want to have advisory. I don't want anything. I just need, I just need time to work time from school and time from home. Uh, and if that's the case, okay, you need quietness and, and loneliness. That's okay. We can provide that too. <laughs> so it's very much based on the needs from, from the individual or, or the team. So, but we have, um, we still do the tools of Fika. Uh, we still have the co-working space. Actually, after I think it was two years, um, the um, room uh, next to East Winning Game became available. So St. Kosh invested money in restoring that uh, office space into more classic uh, office uh, rooms. Uh, so now we have a, a step like after the co-working space. If you grow out from the office, uh, co-working space, you need a more solid office. We have, I think it's 11 office rooms. Um, um, in the same uh, kind of uh, yeah office space, we have a, a new fresh kitchen in the center area, and the co-working space. I need to add that the co-working space is actually uh, completely free. Uh, we see that as an investment in having more people actually fulfilling their dreams. Um, but you need to like pitch your way in to the co-working space. So you need a, a, a clear project, you need clear goals, and you have to be compatible with the community values, uh, basically. But, but if all that uh, is, is checked in, you get your own uh, key and you can come and go to the co-working space 24-7. Um, and the office rooms you pay, uh, what do you say, market price for. So that's the, the free stuff ends there. <laughs> um, and, then, and of course, we, we still do advisory and we have a, a large network. So I think, I mean, if, if someone has questions that we cannot answer, we have people in our network that can um yeah so that's that's it i guess mm. so how did you how do you staff it then because these uh, game developers come and they really need a lot of help with business development and advice and stuff like that and could you was it enough could you provide all of that or did you have to bring in uh, other people <laughs> from your network yeah we are still financed and owned by 
a real estate company, uh, which means that we are sh- kind of short on, on funding. Uh, we are not part of the national incubator program so forth. So right now we are in Lean Shopping. We are two persons working part time. Um, so together it's almost like one, one full uh, employment. So time is always uh, um, short. So we need to be clever with our, our time. Um, but today, like with, with the internet and, and our, we, we don't have, we, we don't, like advisory is kind of important, but also we see that the teams quite often have the, the drive and the passion. They, they find their answers themselves, basically. We just point them in a direction. So we try to be very lean. We never book like uh, several hours long meeting where we go into super depth. We try to like point direction to the teams and they, they, can, they then can go on and explore that direction themselves. Uh, I also need to mention that we also have an, an office in Norris Shopping, the, 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 the sister city or the twin city of Lean Shopping, uh, which we opened uh, uh, late last year. So that's kind of new. So we have... Uh, um, and person over there as well, Evelina, who runs that, um, because we have the U- Lean Shipping University is also present in North Shopping, so we have a, a lot of interesting educations and, and people over there as well. Uh, and so that's, and does it work? That's very, does it work roughly the same there? Or I, yes. I assume it's a bit smaller so far. Or yeah, yeah, it is a bit smaller, but uh, the the offer and the culture is the same, which is quite mm. important, I think. And the uh, collaboration with Lean Shopping University, what does that look like? How do you, how much do you interact and cooperate? Um, since I, I work there, I, I have a lot of, of contacts. Uh, the interaction is mainly informal, I would say. Uh, we don't have like a formal collaboration written on paper, so to speak, but we know uh, people that works in university, um, they invite us to come and, and talk in the relevant educations. And we also have the game conference once a year uh, that is hosted by the university, but we at East Sweden Game fill it with content, so to speak. So it's mainly informal, but I would say that maybe half of the members, individuals at East Sweden Game uh, or originates from the uh, university. So it's, it's, it's very important. I would say, mm-hmm. and there are, as you said, the Lean University isn't a, a game development university. They, they don't have that profile, uh, but there are actually uh, uh, courses in games programming and advanced uh, graphics programming and so forth. And of course the computer science and, and the media technology educations are, are super relevant, of course, yeah. So what, what, what have you uh, learned from all of this now in, interacting with uh, you know, aspiring game <laughs> developers and I'm assuming people coming with different experiences and different needs yeah. uh, and going from kind of nothing in, uh, in, uh, in mm-hmm. the region to now there are several companies. I mean, there are some notable companies associated with East Sweden game already like Pugstorm and Dimfrost Studios, just to name a few, yeah, there are a lot true. more. So what do you think? What, what yeah. is the recipe for success here? What have you learned from these interactions and this work? <laughs> yeah, it's a small it's a question. question because it's so <laughs> many things. It's it's not like it's not one silver bullet, but something that surprised me quite a lot with this winning game was that how strong the community is uh, that you can succeed so much with having people just come together and because a, a big part of my job is just to inspire and to remove, what do you say, like the glass roofs. Uh, a lot of people that come to this winning game, they have the perce- perception of that they don't have what's needed to succeed. They have the perception that some other people have what it, what it takes to succeed. Um, a lot of developers say that, oh, start a company. No, 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 that's, that's too difficult. Or no, no, uh, hiring people or no, forming a team. No, 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 I'm, I'm not, I, I just want to work alone. It's just a hobby. So we learned that the community, when people come together, when, when a, a single young developer meets, for example, you mentioned Pugstorm, they are extremely successful right now. When they meet the founders of, of Pugstorm and they realize that uh, they are, those are the same, they, they are the same kind of people and they, they went to the same education and, and uh, it, it's not that hard. It's not like they're, they're super successful people. They are not the wizards. They are just like you and I, but maybe they had a bit stronger vision or maybe uh, they were lucky. So just having people come together um, where my job is mostly facilitating and just pointing in the right direction and also be a bit of Sherlock Holmes. So 
if there's a single programmer and a, a single freelancing artist uh, and they they are quite alone i can like match make and put people together and and then the publisher comes to visit and I can point them in the right direction. It sounds like my job is like pointing in different direction. It's, I think essentially that's what I, that's what I do. So I try just to be an, uh, what do you say? Uh, orchestrator. Is that the word? Yeah. I suppose. Or like all the, all the members play their own instrument. I don't play, play an instrument, but I'll try to orchestrate it and have people you play know, in yeah, the, the same conductor uh, harmony. The and the same, yeah. Conductor. Yes. That's, that's mm -hmm. the one conductor. That's, that's me. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's something I've learned how strong a community can be, and also what happens when you remove the the glass roofs over people when you show them that you you have everything that's needed to succeed. Uh, uh, and when people realize that that's true, uh, the energy that comes out of that is amazing, uh, and, and that energy can can move mountains. That's that's pretty cool. I think. I get goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. And those goosebumps, I think, is an excellent uh, conclusion to our conversation because we are already uh, almost out of time. Uh, but I think wow. that concluded it really well. Uh, cool. So we will, uh, in a minute, open up for questions after we have uh, 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 concluded the recording. But uh, I'm just going to mention that. Uh, thank you so much, Thomas. And the uh, next episode of the Gotland Game Talk is going to be on the 10th of May. And then we will be talking to Daniel Villen at Arctic Game. Uh, but really, Thomas, thank you so much for your insights and your experiences and for talking to us today. Thank you for having me. <laughs>